thanks for joining me in making the Cheryl bracelet. Check out the links below for a list of materials to make your own. For our first step, we're going to start with our stop bead. And I have my 8 seed bead here. I'm going to use this as my stop bead because it's going to be the first bead that I'm going to use in my project. So I'm just going to go ahead and add that on now and use it as my stop bead. After my stop bead, I want to leave a thread tail so that I can then pick up this thread at the end of my project and use it to add my clasp on. If you have to measure your thread, your tail thread, which I would suggest because sometimes it's really hard to just look at your thread and know about what length it is, uh, you can use this handy little ruler here. And this is um, our bead ruler. It's five and a half to six inches on the end here. You can see it measures to five and a half, but you've got a little extra room there on the edges. <laughs> so if you just hold up your thread, you can see if you hold it up to that edge of the ruler, that should give you plenty of room to add a simple clasp. If you're gonna need a lot more thread than that, then I wouldn't count on using uh, your tail thread. I would just add another piece of thread at the end of your project so that way, as you're working with your project, you don't have a really long piece of unruly thread hanging out there uh, while you're working. So, so there we go. <laughs> We're gonna start with our stop bead here, leave a decent size tail thread for your clasp, and now we're gonna start with our first step. We're gonna start by picking up a four millimeter round, and then we're gonna pick up eight more sets of this pair. So I have an 8 and a four millimeter round, and I'm gonna pick up eight more sets, or seven more sets, because I need eight sets total. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pick those up in that pattern. So I have five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, so now I should have eight sets on here. And I've started with my 8 seed bead, and I'm ending with my fire polish round. I'm going to take these beads and just push, put them into a circle here. I'm going to take my thread and just go through that stop bead, which is the first bead in my project, and the fire polish round next to it. So that first set of two beads. And now I've got a nice little circle to get started with. As I go around my circle now, I'm just going to keep going around my circle, and as I pass through each 8 seed bead, I'm going to add three 11 seed beads. Now if you want to, you can also pass through all these beads again and come back out where you are here, so just go back through all eight sets uh, just to reinforce and tighten your circle if you want to. Um, I'm not going to uh, for this video, I'm just going to make sure that I hold on to my tail thread really tightly. <laughs> but going through and tightening up your project um, which is some extra thread is also a really handy and great way to do that. So I'm coming through one of my 8 seed beads here. So I'm going to pick up three of my 11 O's and just circle back around that 8 O and then on through the next set of beads. So on through the next four millimeter fire polished round and I'm going to go through my next 8 O and then another set of three 11 O's. And again, back through, back through my 8 here. And then I'm gonna continue around my circle um, doing the same, exact same thing, just adding, uh, it's, a, it's a little pico trim basically, adding three 11 O's onto each of my 8 O's. After adding three 11 O's to the outside or top of eight of each 8 O, your project is gonna look like this. 
So you'll have your little circle here with your three 11 O's all sticking out on the outside here. Your second 11 O in each set is the center 11 O and that will be the one that's sticking out the most. That's the bead that we're going to work with in this step. So we're only going to be working with that center 11 O. So now to get in position to start this next step, we're going to be coming out of one of our 8 O's and pass through that first 11 O and then the second 11 O, which I will just call that the center because that's going to be that center 11 O in that set of three. We're going to pick up one 11 o, pass through the next center 11 o, atop of that 8 o, and we're just going to continue in this fashion the whole way around our circle. So I'm picking up one new 11 o and passing through that center 11 o, one new 11 o, and passing through the next center 11 o. So as I do this, it's going to pull all of my seed beads in towards the center. So it's going to just pull all of those seed beads in. And I'm gonna continue around, keeping my thread tail out of the way. And that's why I suggested earlier not to leave a tail thread too long because it's just gonna be a hassle to work with and um, tail threads are hard enough to, <laughs> to have to work around. Don't make it any harder than it has to be. <laughs> okay, so I have one more 11 o here. So I've got one more new 11 o And I'm gonna pass through my last center 11 o here, which is just at the beginning where I started. So if I give everything a nice little tight pull, now you can see that all of my seed beads that were on the outside are now pulled into the center. Now I had eight seed beads originally that were the centers. So now I've added another eight, so I have 16 seed beads here in the center forming a little circle. I'm gonna pass through all of those 16 seed beads again so the center seed beads and the new seed beads that I just added. And I'm gonna pass through them all again just to make sure that I have everything nice and tight. You don't need to pull too tight, but I wanna make sure that I have everything cinched up. I don't wanna have any gaps. I wanna make sure that I don't have any um, any gaps or any slack. And this will just help also align the beads so they're not sitting wonky. There we go. So now I have those 16 seed beads in the center. I've just passed through them once and that's good enough just to help everything get back in, in alignment where it should be. So now I'm ready to add my center bead, which is my 6O, or my six millimeter. <laughs> So I have a six millimeter uh, Potomac Pearl. You can use any six millimeter bead that you want, but I like the pearl here. I like the color and the different sheen that it's going to add. So you can see here that I have, I have matte beads, I have matte seed beads, um, a matte galvanized, so it's kind of like a semi-matte, and then I have a silver lined, which is really shiny, and I have pearl finish. So we have all these different um, different um, sheens going on, which I really like in a project because it just creates so much more interest. So coming out of one of my 11 o seed beads here, it doesn't really matter which one, but if you just take note of whether or not you are coming out of one of those um, center 11 o's or one of the ones that you added between the center 11 o's, um, that will just help you because then that will help you um, when you add your pearl or six millimeter. So I am coming out of one of my center 11 O's. So that means directly below it, I have 
an 8 OC bead. I'm going to pick up one of my pearls, one of my six millimeters, and then I'm going to pass through the seed bead directly opposite of the seed bead that I'm coming out of here. So I'm coming out of one of my center seed beads directly on top of my 8 -o. so I'm just going to go across here and pass through the center seed bead um, sitting on top of that 8 -o on the other side. And that way I know that I have gone directly across and so I'm going in a straight line here. I'm going to pass through my set, uh, six millimeter pearl again and go back through the 11 o on the other side. So all I'm doing is just anchoring my six millimeter bead in place. And I'm gonna go back through that pearl. So you don't have to go back through that pearl again once you have it anchored, but I wanna work um, in a direction away from my stop thread. So since my stop thread is on this side of my project, I wanna get in position to add my next section um, opposite of that stop bead. So now I'm gonna pass through that 11 -0 again, that 11 -0 that I was using to anchor my six millimeter. And I'm gonna pass through one of those 11 O's that was on either side of the center 11 O. And I'm gonna pass through my fire polished round. So my four millimeter bead. So I'm coming out of that four millimeter bead and I'm gonna set myself up to start another one of these sections. I need to pick up one 8 -o, one of my four millimeter fire polished, and then another 8 -o. So I just have those three beads on and let those fall down to the project. Oops, yep, beads rolling around everywhere. I'm gonna pass through that fire polish round again in the opposite direction. So I'm just creating a little circle here and pull that tight. Because this is the connection to the next section, I'm gonna go back through these beads again and just make this uh, connection secure and tight. So it doesn't hurt to go back through at least once, maybe two times, depending on uh, how secure you feel it is and uh, how thick your thread is. If you're using a thinner thread, I would go through a couple more times. Uh, you don't need to go crazy, but you just wanna make sure that you have a nice secure connection. So I'm going through here and I'm going back through my fire polished round. So now I wanna be in a position to start my next section coming out of that fire polished round. So now, what I'm going to do is start um, over again with the first step of this first section here. So just start over again at the first step. But I already have one of my fire polish rounds. So now I'm just going to add the additional beads that I need. So my fire polish, and I'm going to add an 8 -o. So now I need seven more sets of fire polished 8 o to complete that set of eight to create the outside of my circle here. So I'm gonna add this real quick, or maybe not so quick. <laughs> so I have one, two, three, four, five, seven and one more here will be eight. So now when I close this circle and I pass through my fire polish round again, you can see here now I have a mirror image that I've started and I'm gonna continue with this circle of beads in the same fashion as this 
uh, disc or circle here. So just start over again at the beginning um, and add your 11 O's to the outside, add your pearl in the center, and then do another connection opposite of your connection here until you are at the length that you need for your bracelet. I've now made my bracelet the length that I need it minus about an inch to allow for the length of the clasp. So at this point, I'm ready to add my clasp. I'm, I have my thread and my needle coming out of my fire polish round where I would be coming out and uh, getting ready here to add the next circle or disc section. Uh, so I'm just in that same position and I'm gonna add the clasp here. So there's a couple different ways that you could add a clasp, a couple different clasps that I chose to show you today are the lobster clasp, and I'm also gonna show you how to add a button. So depending on which one you prefer, I'll show you both ways. So for the lobster clasp, I would suggest first adding a wire guard. You can add a wire guard or you can add a ring. The wire guard is just a really easy way to um, add a little piece of hardware to then attach your, your um, lobster clasp onto. So coming out of that fire polish round, I'm going to start by picking up my 80 seed bead and then an 11 o seed bead. Then I'm gonna pass through one of the side channels of my wire guard. And then I'm gonna pass over the top of the wire guard down through that second channel. And if you've never used a wire guard before, you want to make sure that your thread is sitting in that little channel in the center. So right at that U shape, your thread's just gonna sit nice and tight in that channel. And you're going through, you're going up the one side, you're going up the one side, through that channel and back down the other side. Very simple. Just make sure we get that nice and tight close to our project. And then I'm gonna pick up my 11 and eight again and go back through, back through that four millimeter fire polished and give that a little pull. So now I have added a wire guard and I picked up the 80 seed beads here just to mimic that same look as down here with the connections. I'm gonna pass through my seed beads and wire guard again. Every time that you have a place or some beads that are going to be connecting another section where you know that there's going to be um, some wear and tear on that section, you wanna reinforce it. So that's also why we reinforced the sections here between the discs because that's where the bracelet is going to move a lot and you just wanna make sure that you make that as secure as possible. So I'm just going back down through that wire guard again, through my seed beads, making sure that my thread stays in that channel, that channel at the top there. And then at this point, once I have my wire guard secured on there, I can um, tie off and cut off the rest of my thread. I'm not gonna need to use my thread for anything else on this side of the clasp. So I'm gonna take my thread and just go down here through my project a little bit, tie a little knot, and there's lots of different ways, lots of different uh, feelings on how to end your project the best way. Um, this is just the way that I prefer to do it. Um, you can check out some of Allie's other videos and check out how she ended them, ties off her thread. It really depends on the project, depends on the thread you're using, how well you wanna hide that thread, but this is my preferred method. And then once I have a couple knots in there, and I've taken the rest of my thread through the project. 
I can now burn down the end of my thread or give it a snip with some really sharp scissors. But burning is just so much more fun than cutting. <laughs> so I burn that I burn that down. And now, if you are choosing to use the wire guard method, you're going to need to use a ring, a jump ring. So you're going to want an open jump ring, not one that's closed. And we're going to open our jump ring by getting two sets of pliers and just gripping on either side of the opening or that little slit and then opening it like a spring. So you're just going to turn the one set of pliers toward you. You're not going to pull them apart and make your little O look like a U. You're just going to un you're just going to open it just like it would be like a slinky. And then we're just going to add the lobster. Oops. The lobster and take our take our jump ring through the wire guard and add the lobster. So we have both of those things hanging off of our jump ring and closed up the same way. So we stretched out the slinky and then we unstretched the slinky. So then you've got your clasp on this side. Now you can also cut out the middleman. You don't have to use the jump ring. You can just attach your clasp to the wire guard before you sew the wire guard onto your piece. So in that case, what you would do is you would take your wire guard and just slide your clasp onto the wire guard and then take your thread and needle through the wire guard with your, with your clasp attached. So that's another way to do it if you don't want to have to uh, use a jump ring to attach it. So just one quick note here. I just showed you how to add a lobster clasp onto your piece with a wire guard. So for the other side of your clasp, if you're using this clasp method, uh, you will just add a ring to that other side instead of a ring and a lobster clasp. So on one side of your bracelet, you will have a wire guard with a ring and a lobster clasp, or like I mentioned, you could just add the lobster clasp directly onto the wire guard. Uh, and then on the other side of your bracelet, you will have just a wire guard with a ring, and that's your closure. Uh, so now I'm gonna show you how to add an entirely different clasp. So if you don't want to use the lobster clasp method or closure, uh, you can use something like a cut button. And I will show you that on this side here. So I'm sure you've seen, um, if you've watched any of our videos before, you've seen Allie add cut buttons to lots of projects. <laughs> so I'm just going to show you quickly um, what my count would be for my cup, for my uh, seed beads here, um, if you're not familiar with adding a cut button. So coming out of my fire polish round again, I'm in the same position as I would to add any other class. And I think what's gonna work best for this is to pick up a couple of my 80 seed beads and then a 15 or um, an 11 0. <laughs> a couple 80s and an 11 0. And then you're gonna go through that cut button through one side. And this is a table cut button, so that has a nice, a nice um, kind of sheen to it with that table cut. And you can see the grooves in there, very nice. And then I'm going to add a couple seed beads to the top to embellish it. So I'm going to pick up my 11 0, my 8 0, and then another 11 0. And that'll just bridge the gap between my two holes in my button. And then go back through that second hole. And then I'm going to pick up the 11 0 and two 8 0s. Back through 
that fire polished round. And again, I'm going to go back through all my beads here, through my seed beads, through the cup button, and through the seed beads again, just so that I can reinforce this, since this is the part of the bracelet that's gonna get the most wear and tear as you pull at it, trying to take your bracelet on and off. So that is how I would add a cup button closure. And then on the opposite side of this uh, cup button, on the opposite side of the bracelet, you'll do a uh, cup, you'll do a loop, a seed bead loop. So I will show you that as well. On the opposite side of your cup button, you're going to need a loop made from seed beads. So here I have a loop of, or I have a string right now of 1980 seed beads and I'm coming out of that same uh, fire polish four millimeter round, so we're always adding the clasp to that same round on either side. And I've got my 19 beads here. I'm gonna go back through that fire polish round. And then I'm gonna test this just to make sure it fits over my cup button pretty well. So I'm holding my thread pretty tightly so that, this, um, so that there's no slack here. And what I'm gonna do is just test my loop over my cut button. And so you can see here that that fits very nicely without a lot of slack. It's not too big and it's not too small. It's not hard to push it over my cut button. So that's perfect. So 19 worked really well for me. You will have to experiment maybe 18, maybe 20, depending on the particular beads that you use. Um, so this is the cup button closure with a cup button on one side and your loop on the other. I hope you had fun with this tutorial. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel so that you can be notified as soon as we have other amazing fun tutorials for you to try. Uh, remember to also share photos of your designs and creations with us in our Facebook group. Look forward to seeing you on the Facebook group.